Jab, 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 Right Hook by Gary Vaynerchuk. Well, this book is all about understanding how to grow your following, how to grow your business using social media marketing. You see, most businesses are approaching social media marketing the wrong way. What they're doing is they're constantly shouting as loudly as possible on top of like on top of each other shouting over each other all they're saying is buy our stuff this is our stuff this is good this is better than others and you should buy it they're giving absolutely nothing of value to the social media user and they're just making an ask and that is a very dangerous way to go about using social media marketing so how does great social media marketing work it is all about engaging the audience so that they will buy. And this book gives you a formula for that, a recipe for how to do social media marketing the right way. It's the fundamental marketing strategy in some ways, fundamental social media marketing strategy. Author Gary Vaynerchuk also called lovingly as Gary V. He's a popular best-selling author of multiple business books, Crush It, Crushing It, Thank You Economy, Ask Gary V. I've been a big fan of his work. He has a great YouTube channel, uh, Ask Gary V, or Gary V as well. Uh, digital, he's a digital media entrepreneur, runs a $100 million plus agency, used to run Wine Library TV, angel investor in a lot of different tech companies, really smart guy, lots to learn from him. And with that said, let's dive into this book. Let's figure out what Gary Vaynerchuk has to say about jab, 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 right hook. So as I said, this is like the master strategy, the meta strategy of all social media marketing in some ways, jab, 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 right hook. The way the fundamental, the most fundamental thing we need to understand when it comes to social media marketing is that we must give before we ask. Give your prospects, your leads, your potential customers a lot of value. Tell them your story in a fun, engaging way. And once you've engaged them, once you've given them value, once you've educated them, once you've entertained them, then and only then should you ask for a sale. It's like the the jab, 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 right hook, the name comes from a very simple boxing analogy. In boxing, the job of a boxer is to first jab the opponent, jab, 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 at the opponent for a very long time, and then at the perfect opportunity, during at the perfect time, you throw a right hook when the opponent has been softened with plenty of jabs. You don't just start throwing right hooks off the bat. That's not boxing. So that's exactly how social media marketing works. Jab, 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 as in give, 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 and then you ask for value. Then you throw the right hook. That's social media marketing in today's world. So um, really, if you think about it, jab, 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 this is like giving, giving, giving a lot of value, putting a lot of effort into your jabs, building your reputation, engaging your users, your potential customers emotionally, putting a lot of care into what you create, putting a lot of care into your social media posts, into your content. And the amazing thing is when you put a lot of care into it, when you care about others, others care for you. It's really that simple. And once you have given those, once you have put those jabs out where you have given, given, given a lot of value on social media, now you can put out the right hook, which is asking for a sale, which is a promotion. And when you do it right, people will buy. People, a good percent of your right hooks will land. As Gary Vee says, there is no sale without the story, no knockout without the setup. So the setup is the jabs. The story are the jabs in this world of social media marketing. So how do we how do we differentiate the two? Well, let's look at it like this. Jabbing is content that gets them to laugh, that gets them to have fun, maybe shed a tear, maybe interact with your content. They learn something new from it and they escape from their day-to-day -day reality. They are educated. Uh, it's, it's an emotionally moving moment from that content. The goal of all your jabs should be to engage your users, to educate them, to get an emotional response, and to turn them into fans of your content. And then the right hook is your call to action that benefits your business. Maybe it's a promotion, it's a sale, it's a call to action, whatever it might be. So initially you do a, or throughout your process of social media marketing, you do a lot of jabbing and a few select right hooks here and there. And that's how you build a fan base and also are able to sell to them. 
You see, most businesses, they are throwing far too many right hooks. They are trying to just go for the sale right away. They're not engaging the customer enough. They are very hungry for their right hook to land, and they're not spending enough effort on those jabs. The jabs are crucial. So the mindset you need to have is that you need to put out, you need to throw more jabs and less right hooks, a lot more jabs. It's not just three jabs, more like 10, 15, 20. Lots and lots and lots of engaging content, and that's peppered in with your ask, your call to action, your sales message, and all those things. So that's the meta strategy of all social media marketing. If you just remember the idea that you must jab, 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 and then throw a right hook, you are well ahead of probably 90% of the businesses out there. With that said, let's talk more about how to put this all in in practice in some ways. The three keys to the perfect jab. First is that your jab should not be too demanding. Don't make the prospect or the lead jump through hoops to kind of consume your content or to enjoy your content. Make it easy, make it fun. Second key for the perfect jab is that it should not be annoying or intrusive. If someone is consuming entertainment, well, you can be their entertainment. If they are consuming education, you can be their education. Well, think about it. This is exactly what's happening in this video right now. You are watching this video voluntarily. This is not intrusive or annoying. You are watching the summary of this book because you, are, you want to be educated. You want to learn something new. And the key to a perfect job is that you're not trying to be intrusive. You're not trying to shove your product down the customer's throat. It's a subtle, seamless integration into their experience. And the third key to the perfect job is that it has to be native to the platform. Think about it. Uh, something that works very well on YouTube may not work as well on podcasts or on Instagram or on Facebook. Something that works well on Instagram, like pictures, uh, they don't work very well on YouTube. They don't really get that much traction or short 30 second videos or 15 second videos. That's not what YouTube is for. YouTube is for long form videos, just like the one you're watching here. And then something that's ideal for Facebook, like a short form posts, they're not really designed for podcasts. So every platform has um, has something that's perfect for, uh, has the form of content that's perfect for it, and we must be able to deliver native to that platform. Those are the three keys to the perfect job. Perfect jab, not too demanding, not annoying or intrusive, and native to the platform. That kind of content is what we need. The next big idea in this book is that content is king, but context is God. You have to make sure that your jabs, your content is published with the right context or it will just fail, it will flop because the context will override any content you put out there. Your context is God. Now, you might be wondering, what does it mean? How do you get context right? Well, one of the first keys to getting your context right is that you need to make sure your content is native to the platform that which you're on which you're operating. Every platform is different and your content must fit the mold of that platform. It's like, think of every social media platform has its own language. So we have to speak that language to win on that platform. Not only that, uh, the content has to be the right, has to be in the right context for your business. That narrative is really crucial. Let me give you an example. Let's say you have a fitness channel and suddenly one day you decide you're going to review the newest iPhone because it's new, it's out there and it's getting a lot of traffic. So you, uh, you decide to create a video for it. But the problem with that is that no matter how great your iPhone review video is, it's completely out of context for your business. It feels like an affiliate link, money grab strategy, and that kind of stuff will totally hurt your business. That great content will not only uh, fail to grow your business, but it will actually have negative effect because it's totally out of context of what your business is about, which is fitness. But if you give it context and you can tell people how the new iPhone will help you become fitter with the new apps and the sensors and all the 
things and how it has changed the fitness game. Now you're giving them context and now suddenly that content actually might make sense. So remember, your content has to be the right context for your business in order for it to actually help you grow your business. Really, really, really crucial idea to understand. Content is king, but context is God. Take some other examples. Um, if there is a YouTube, if there there are videos on YouTube now, YouTube videos are supposed to be engaging, educational, mostly long form videos, as in five minutes to hours or two hours or three hours. YouTube videos are not uh, short thirty second slide videos or thirty second videos or audio only clips and no videos. That's more for audio. If it was audio only, you would go to podcasts. If it was short 30 second videos, you would put them on Instagram. If it was slides, you would put them on SlideShare. Similarly, podcasts, it's like audio is the perfect medium for it or audio is a perfect form of content for it. But if you try to put um, long form videos on it, people don't really consume videos on podcasts. They are podca video podcasts, but people don't really consume video on podcasts. Similarly, 30 second podcast clips really difficult because people are trying to listen to podcasts for long periods of time. Uh, Instagram, you know, it's great for pictures, great for short form videos, but not really great for long form YouTube style videos. It's not really designed for that. So as you can see, every content platform, every social media platform has a different, uh, different language, has a different way of approaching content. And we must make sure that we live in the right context. Twitter, it shines as a short text communication platform, but if you try to put videos on it or um, or sh audios on it, it just doesn't work. Uh, Facebook, short form videos, pictures, short posts. It's not like Medium where you write long form posts. It's not like YouTube where you create long videos. It just doesn't work like that. Take the example of Facebook videos versus YouTube video. This is a very common question I get in my coaching calls uh, where people are thinking, hey, how about I actually post my videos on Facebook rather than start a YouTube channel? You see, big difference in the context. Facebook is a marketing channel up front and the content there is ephemeral. It's here today, gone tomorrow. You can post today and tomorrow nobody would see it. Your content gets a limited time boost and then it disappears. On the other hand, YouTube is a content library. This video, maybe you're watching it the day it is released or you're watching it four years later. It's still there. You're still going to find it. You're still going to search and find this a jab, 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 right hook summary, and you'll still be able to watch it. This content lives on YouTube forever. The content is searchable, but I couldn't say the same about Facebook. Nobody's going to search for jab, 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 right hook on Facebook and find this summary. That's very highly, highly, highly unlikely. Uh, so you have to be very clear on what this medium stands for. Because once you're clear about that, then you can publish the right content. Then you are clear on the context. So think, why are your users, why are your prospects or leads or potential customers on that social media channel right now? If they are on Pinterest, they're there to browse the pictures. If they're on YouTube, they're there to watch videos. If they're on podcasts, they're there to listen to some long form audio. And also think, why are they on my channel or your Instagram or your feed or your podcast right now? What are they looking for? That will give you the clarity of the context. So if people come to 2000 books, they are there to consume knowledge from the world's greatest books, whether it's in form of video or in, forms of, in form of audio when it comes to the podcast or in forms of quotes on Instagram. It's all about the world's greatest business books and personal development books. So every every channel, every business has a context. Every uh, social media platform has a context and we must operate within that context if we are going to shine in our business. So remember, content is king, but context is God. Really, really, really crucial idea to understand. All right, a lot of businesses uh, approach social media marketing as a direct sales channel. But that's not the case. You see, as Gary Vaynerchuk says, marketers are on social media to sell stuff. Customers, however, are not. They are there for value. So most brands use social media to push uh, some not so useful content in people's feeds, but they're mostly there to promote their products or services, and they're trying to use social media as a direct sales channel. 
But instead, as Gary says, social media is a storytelling channel. It's an engagement channel. It's an educational channel. It's you have to be there for what the consumer is there for. So what's your job? Not to approach social media as a direct sales channel, but instead approach it as an engagement channel, as an educational channel, as a storytelling channel. So your job should be to share content, tell stories, spark engagement, strike an emotional cord, uh, cord and create brand loyalty. And as you do that, people will come to you, people will buy from you. So social media isn't a direct sales channel, it is more of an engagement channel. Okay, the next big idea is to, to understand how to make a right hook seem like a jab. Is it possible to make a right hook, which is a sale? Uh, is it possible to make your call to action for a sale seem like a jab, seem like a nice piece of content? Is it? Well, the key, as Gary Vee says, is that you shouldn't do it. This is what 99% of businesses are trying to do, which is trying to make the right hook seem like a jab, but you'll fail at it. When you jab, you just jab. When you give, it's time to give, just give. Don't make it a sales message. But when you right hook, you right hook, you sell. Don't disguise the sale. So don't try to combine the two, let the two be separate. There is time for right hook and there's time for jab. Let both of these exist and coexist, but don't try to intermingle the two. So the next big idea, and this is one of my favorites, is to understand that all companies should be media companies. Let me give you the examples. Uh, Michelin Tire Company, what they did was over 100 years ago, they started reviewing rural restaurants because they wanted to encourage city people to drive to rural areas and if people drove to rural areas, that would wear out their tires more quickly and they would want to buy these Michelin tires. And as a result of all of that, today you know there are Michelin star restaurants, some of the most famous, some of the most well-known restaurants in the world, all because Michelin Tire Company decided to become a media company in some ways, and that was what allowed people to uh, um, build trust with Michelin and not only that, it helped serve their business as well. So a great angle to, to approach media in some ways. Another company that did it amazingly was Guinness. What Guinness did was they created Guinness Book of World Records because they wanted to give people something to talk about in pubs and bars when they were drinking Guinness. So think about how crafty this uh, content is in this case, both Guinness and the Michelin Tire Company's reviews of rural restaurants. These are both companies that decided that they're gonna use content, they're, use, they're gonna use media to be able to sell more of their product in very creative ways. And that's how we need to approach social media marketing today. You see, every business, every business out there can tell a story that people can associate with. They can create engaging content that gets people to keep coming back. And they can, as a result, grow the business by thinking of themselves as media companies as well. If you think about Guinness Book of World Records, this is uh, somewhat educational, somewhat fun, somewhat engaging content, which is great for people and great for Guinness. If you think of Michelin Tire Company, it is somewhat educational, somewhat fun, somewhat uh, exploratory in nature. And that has given Michelin a huge name and allowed them to sell more tires. You see, every kind of business out there can do this, can figure out a way to become a media company. If you are a lawyer, you can tell stories of real courtroom trials and struggles and drama and all those things. If you're a restaurant, you can tell the story of a local area that the food comes from. If you are Expedia, you have destination travel videos. Frankly, one of my favorite channels on YouTube is the Expedia travel channel because I just love to watch their videos. SpaceX, if you're SpaceX, you have videos and pictures of Mars or uh, videos of rocket launches that capture people's imagination and build that fan base, that loyal fan base. So every business, every business should become a media company in order to thrive in this space. Every business can tell a story, engage their audience, and build a fan base if they decide to do so. And your job, if you want to dominate the world of social media marketing, is to become a media company just as much as you are a company about your product or service. All right, the next 
important idea, really, really important idea is to stay consistent across all of your platforms, across all channels. No matter which platform you're on, no matter where you are putting out content, you sh your personality and your brand identity should always remain consistent. It should always remain the same. If users feel that your personality is inconsistent between different platforms, they will not trust your brand. So this kind of uh, ties the whole thing together. So even though you have to use different languages on different platforms in order to be able to speak to your customers, in order to be able to engage, and in order to make sure you're speaking in the right context, you still must maintain your personality and your brand identity in order to be able to communicate with your potential customers that will make them trust your brand so stay consistent across all channels across all platforms in order to grow your brand all right and the last idea but probably the most important idea is, is how to apply this book how to apply jab 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 right hook f to your business to your um you know social media marketing efforts i'll take the example of 2000 books so what kind of jabs do we put out there well, if you look at this channel, this YouTube video, or the podcast that you're listening to, there's so many free summaries of great business books, great self-help books, interviews with authors. Think about it. What are you watching right now? This is a book summary. This is a marketing book summary. It's an educational piece of content, and it's 15, 20 minutes of very valuable knowledge. It is free. It is useful. It's going to help your life. It's going to tremendously benefit you. And literally, our hope is that as you watch more videos more or you listen to more podcast episodes from 2000 books you will become a fan of 2000 books we all of these videos all of these free videos are just giving 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 but then comes the right hook well during or at the end of an educational video or podcast episode Sometimes we make an ask. Sometimes maybe I'll tell you, hey, you can get this mind map, this whole mind map that I showed you right now. Literally, right now I'm telling you, you can get this mind map for free by going to 2000books.com slash bonus. You can even download a free PDF summary. You can join different challenges, uh, maybe the focus challenge, the indestructible mind challenge. And sometimes I'll ask you, hey, you can buy our summary pack, our marketing book summary pack, our entrepreneurship book summary pack, our productivity book summary pack. We have a lot of different book summary packs. You see, that ask is something that will benefit both 2,000 books and you, the potential customer. I'm not just asking, I'm not just making a random ask. Only after I have educated you, only after I have given you tremendous value, will I make that ask and will I say, hey, I know you're watching this marketing book summary. You just listened to this amazing piece of content about jab, 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 right hook. Now, this is just one marketing book summary. Would you maybe want access to all 50 of our marketing book summaries? Because if you do, you can grab the marketing book summary pack by going to 2000books.com slash marketing. Now, so the way this right hook is coming is I'm asking, I'm making a very pertinent ask to what you just consumed, right? Um, to it, This ask is very relevant to you right now because I know you're interested in marketing. I know you're interested in this book. So you're probably interested in learning from a lot of other books about marketing. So here in this whole thing, in this whole uh, book, what I did was I applied the principles of jab, 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 right hook all the way. I gave you tons of value for a long period of time, and then I made a small pitch at the end of it. So it's probably like 15 minutes of value, one minute of jab, one minute of asking, one minute of making a pitch. So it's 15 jabs, one right hook. And by the way, if you're looking for links to the links to the mind map, where to get it, you can find it in the description below. If you're looking for links to where to find our book summary pack, where you get 50 book summaries, just like what you watched here, you can also find that link below.